This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers that includes equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. This is the Nikon ZFC, and it's the camera that I've been waiting for Nikon to make. It's retro. It looks like an older Nikon. It looks like a film camera. It's beautiful. It's fun to use with all of these tactile knobs and dials. It has 20 megapixels, and it's just a dream. I don't know why you've been waiting for Nikon to make that, because Fuji's been making that camera for a decade. <laughs> this is the X-T3. You can pick up a used one for the same price as that. It's, it's better. No, I the XT3, what does that even stand for? What does ZFC stand for? This is Zentucky Fried Chicken, so. And what, are you Colonel Xanders now? <laughs> Not only is my XT3 better than that, yeah. but my iPhone is better than that. Cause look at that lens, <laughs> why is it so fat like that? It's super fat on one end and a little tiny on the other end. There's no way an iPhone is better than this. No photographer is going to agree with you, so I'm certain we're gonna win that challenge, but let's just do it. Let's see how right I am. Okay, put that camera around your neck and let's go take some pictures. It's so big. Chelsea, not everything in photography has to be some big controversial fight. Can we just <laughs> set that aside for a second and talk about sure. what we like about this camera? Yeah, I know that you're roasting my camera a little bit, but I also know that you appreciate what this camera has to offer, and that's that it's a fun experience, it's a tactile experience, it's lightweight, and it's a good time to use. It makes you like photography, right? I like a camera around the neck like this. Mm -hmm. Like the X-T3, it's a little too heavy to carry around your neck, so I carry it on my shoulder. Big pro cameras, you can't carry it like that, but it's so lightweight that you have it here, and then it's always ready to go. It's more accessible than a smartphone, and when I use that, I take more pictures. I also enjoy the experience more. And you know what else? We took it out to lunch with our niece the other day. I set it on the table, and the waitress came and asked if it was a film camera. That is the impression. You're not a creep with a big pro camera. You're not just somebody snapshotting with your smartphone. You become an ex a photographer. You become an artist. Right, I do think that's the message it sends. When people see a big DSLR, I think they might associate it with a professional photographer or paparazzi. And you see this and you think, now there's an artiste that I'd like to be friends with. <laughs> okay, so whether you shoot with smartphones or pro cameras, I think you should have a camera like this to bring the fun back to the process of photography. But I've been shooting with that a lot and I'm not sure it's that much fun. I have some real gripes with the controls. All right, you just started up the fight. You wanna end the fight, you wanna start the fight. Okay, let me use that, we'll walk and I'll talk about what the problems with it are. Okay. even understand what your complaint is with this camera. It's such a fun camera. It's the PASM. You still have to select a mode. You can't just directly select automatic or manual shutter and aperture speeds from the dials. I'll, I'll show you. Okay, well, regardless of which camera you choose, you want to make sure that it's well protected and you definitely don't want to end up one of those stories in a photo blog where someone gets their gear destroyed or stolen and then they have to start some crowdsourcing thing because they have no coverage. When you join PPA, you can get $15,000 in gear insurance and that means that if you get your gear lost, stolen or broken, it can be replaced with a $350 deductible or if it's just broken, you can get it fixed for a $50 flat fee that's a great assurance that your gear is going to be safe. And they also have video training and contracts and yeah. so many other resources for both professional and enthusiastic photographers. So check out this link here and in the description. And if you decide to sign up, you can use this coupon code. Thanks, PPA. Here's a real scenario. I had this camera in aperture priority mode. I looked at the automatic shutter speed that it had set and it was too slow. So I grabbed the shutter speed dial and adjusted it, but the camera didn't actually change the shutter speed. And I had this moment of confusion and frustration where I was like, why is it not doing anything? And the reason was it was an aperture priority mode. So I would have to decide, do I want to control both the aperture and the shutter speed? If so, put it in manual mode. Do I want to control only the shutter speed? If so, put it in the shutter priority mode. And then I would be able to adjust the setting here. But the whole PASM, mode 
model is unnecessary in a camera with analog controls. Fuji has shown that. All it takes is an A. Put an auto mode on the shutter dial, put an auto mode on the ISO dial, and then you can change the settings directly and never have to think about the mode. It's a small change, but it is enough that it makes the experience just a little less tactile for me, a little less fun, because it adds in this extra decision point, which still seems completely unnecessary to me. All right, I definitely see your point with the modes issue, Tony, but this is Nikon's first effort coming into this retro modern space with the Z camera, and I think they did an incredible job. And I hope they listen to the feedback because I don't have a horse in either camp. I just want people to love photography and I want cameras to be fun. And I think there are some tweaks that they could make in the next generation. I also hope they release a whole bunch more retro styled APS-C lenses. Like I hope there are four camera bodies to choose from at different price points and a whole bunch of lenses because right now Fuji has dozens of lenses all optimized for APS-C. You can get shallow depth of field. You can go telephoto and get wildlife. And right now Nikon has basically two retro style lenses and four APS-C lenses in total. And this body is way too thin to comfortably use any of their full frame lenses. Coming up soon, we're gonna be putting the Nikon ZFC against the iPhone. So we've been talking a lot about the details and the specs, but I wanted to just give a general impression. What's it like when you get this camera in your hand and you start shooting with it? I really liked it. I've been taking it around downtown, just taking casual shots of my family when we go to lunch and things like that. And it's a fun experience. Um, we've been talking about it being a great tactile experience. That means it's something you kind of just want to sling over your shoulder when you're on your way out the door and just enjoy taking whatever pictures you stumble upon. The photos so far that I've taken look really good uh, and it seems to be easy to use. I've had no problem hitting focus when using the auto focusing. My one thing that I'm not happy about is this lens but you can change the lens. I would upgrade it to a better lens. It feels a bit light, which means that it feels a little bit cheap. And I don't think that's really in line with this nice, substantial tactile experience that we're enjoying. So that would be the one weak point is this very changeable lens. But overall, I like it a lot. That having been said about the lens, the only other lens available is a 28 millimeter F2.8 and it's not shipping right now. So I was not able to put a different lens on it. The 28 millimeter would be a full frame equivalent of about 44 millimeters. And that's a focal length I'd like to keep as a prime lens on my camera. All right, I wanna talk about the video next, but let's go home to do that. It's pretty loud here, so we'll go somewhere quiet. I'll wash my hands from being a, a road worker and uh, we'll talk some more. Oh, and put it up against the iPhone. Okay, we're home and we're ready to talk about the video capabilities of the ZFC. First of all, it's 4K 30 uncropped. Um, it's got eye detect autofocus that works well, so that's a really cool feature. Okay, well, it sees my eye, but it's not adjusting the exposure enough. Let's give it front lighting. Okay, this is better. The focal length is okay. Seems to be tracking it pretty well. And it's got a fully articulating flip screen. Uh, another thing to consider is that the flip screen faces forward and this lens is wide angle enough where you can easily vlog and uh, you won't have any problem making your arm go back far enough to get yourself in, in the frame. So you can see at 16 millimeters, I have no problem getting myself and Frank in the frame. Hi, Frank. What's up, guys? <laughs> Frank just had a baby. Baby Paige. We're madly in love. Aww. It has actually worked out really well as I've been using it, but a question we haven't answered, is the video better than my iPhone? Because my iPhone covers those same focal lengths, plus it goes wider angle, plus it does 4K 60. So maybe we should try it side by side. Okay. All right, so you can see that they're both pretty wide angle. I can get us both in the frame, Tony. And actually your iPhone, um, it looks kind of flat. You know, our skin tones look kind of flat and washed out. I think it looks better on my screen. The advantage of the iPhone is the screen is much bigger and clearer. The advantage of yours is that you have a proper lens and especially the selfie camera on the iPhone is pretty bad. 
So let's flip this around and see what it looks like from the other side. Here's the widest shot with both cameras, and you can see the iPhone here is so much wider. And that's really useful if you're in tight spaces or if you just want that distorted super wide angle effect. But let me zoom in. Looking at the iPhone's medium camera will give us a better comparison for those times when you don't have to go super wide. The skin tones on the Nikon are definitely way better. And here's our telephoto test. The iPhone telephoto lens is about the same as the ZFC zoomed all the way in. Tony, should we walk so we can see the stabilization on each camera? Good idea. All right, I'm just walking and taking a video and kind of being a little bit bouncy so we can get an idea of what it would be like if I were vlogging with either camera or just taking a video of myself. The Nikon skin tones look better, but the iPhone has way better stabilization. So the ZFC does not have a headphone jack, but it does have a mic jack. My one problem with the mic jack is that the location is a little bit inconvenient. So if you put your flip screen around and you're looking at the front, you're gonna have your mic jack coming out right in front of your screen. I can plug microphones or headphones into the little port here, okay. but I also have wireless microphones and headphones because it's 2021. Feels like an attack on wires. <laughs> Now the benefit to the iPhone is you can do live streaming, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, TikTok, and you really can't do that with something like a Nikon ZFC. That's why so many creators are shooting with devices that look like these, even if the video quality isn't as good. Something the iPhone really can't do is telephoto sports. So I put on a 70 to 200 here to see if we can use this for sports for like your kid's game. It advertises 11 frames per second, which is incredibly fast but they don't always achieve that in the real world. So let's give it a shot. I'm shocked how well the Nikon did. It got a real 11 frames per second with about 10 sharp frames per second. Nikon has really improved their autofocus tracking. Congratulations, guys. I bought this for my niece. It's from the 50s and I thought she would love it, but she was a little scared and, uh, Okay, I think I understand why. Let's take some pictures of it for eBay and maybe I can sell this monster. Focusing as close as I can to the bear, the iPhone allowed me to focus much closer, a really useful tool for showing details. I could add extension tubes to the Nikon, but that's extra cost and an extra gadget to carry around. In low light, you can really see the benefits of the Nikon's big sensor and big lens. Look at that incredible dynamic range, allowing you to see the brightly lit eyes while also uncovering all the detail in the shadow. Oh, wait, I got those backwards? The iPhone here looks way better than the Nikon does because the iPhone has this incredible software that really pulls out the dynamic range even in dark environments but the Nikon has a trick up its sleeve. It can shoot raw. Let's bring up those shadows in Lightroom. Now that I've roughly matched the exposure, well, the iPhone still looks way better as the Nikon shows incredible amounts of noise in the recovered shadows. Let's zoom in. Okay, this looks bad for the Nikon, but I'm a professional. I'm going to manually adjust the noise suppression. Even with all the editing I can do in a big raw file, the iPhone just looks better. Here's a clear win for the iPhone. It has a super wide angle lens that the Nikon simply lacks. In fact, right now, you can't even buy a super wide angle lens for an APS-C Nikon camera. Besides just allowing you to get closer to subjects in tight spaces, the super wide angle camera provides an interesting perspective with a huge amount of force perspective. That's what's creating these distorted proportions on the bear, but that can be really useful to serious photographers who are looking for a way to convey a bit of extra strangeness in an image. With the Nikon lens zoomed in all the way and the iPhone on the telephoto lens, the images look really similar zoomed back. Let's zoom in to see some detail. Here, the Nikon definitely shows more detail. The fact is the iPhone's telephoto lens just isn't that good. Another way that Nikon wins is a little bit of background blur. Look at this box behind our subject. The Nikon provides real bokeh, separating the subject from the background and just making it pop by just a little bit. The iPhone in portrait mode could simulate this, but I find the simulations never look that good, especially zoomed in. One way the iPhone wins this is the dynamic range. You can see the top of the bear's head here is overexposed on the photo on the Nikon. 
The iPhone, however, handled this area of high contrast well. In fact, the iPhone software processing is so good that zoomed back, the iPhone picture might look better overall than the Nikon. Let's compare the Nikon to the iPhone with their standard wide angle lenses. At 16 millimeters, you can see the Nikon has a big benefit here. The background is slightly blurred out, whereas it's much sharper on the iPhone. That natural real bokeh is a big benefit of real cameras. However, the iPhone's superior software processing gave it more natural colors under the pool table's artificial yellow lights. Zooming in, I think the detail levels are pretty similar, though maybe the iPhone is actually a little bit sharper. The fact is, no camera's kit lens is great. You could put a better lens on the Nikon, but then you'd also have a much larger and more expensive camera. So the Nikon ZFC, it's beautiful, it's fun to use. Who do you think it's right for? I think this is a great camera for the person that's always saying, I love photography, I'm getting into it on my iPhone, which camera should I get? This is fun, it's easy to use, it's a great tactile experience. I also think it's a great camera for a Nikon shooter that wants a second camera or a more fun camera. And I think it's a great camera for somebody that wants to get into street or just general photography and wants to have a fun experience. The only thing I'll add is, if you're not already a Nikon shooter, you might take a look at cameras like the Fujifilm X100V, which you love, yes, or the X-T3, because they're also really good options that feel great, and especially the X-T3 has more lenses available. Yeah. If you found this useful, please subscribe. We have lots more reviews coming. Give us a like, and if you have one of these cameras, add a comment down below and let us know what you think of it. And thank you to our sponsor, PPA. Yeah, check out the link in the description down below, and we also have a coupon code there as well, so thank you, PPA.